You, Lord, are our In refuge and strength. You, O oh God, are our very present help. You are our shepherd. We shall have no lack. You make us to lie down in green pastures. You are good at all times and in all circumstances. We fear no evil, for you are with us and you make us triumph. Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, today we come acknowledging our mortality as we remember and celebrate the life of Michael. Brother to us all, family to those whom he shared common blood and lineage, friend to unknown numbers, leader and colleague and mentor in journalism, a fellow on this common human journey. With the few gathered here and the many scattered across our beloved isle and beyond in digital space, we contemplate the brevity of life, the suddenness and certainty of death, the uncertainty of the plans we make, though plan we must. Together we grieve and mourn personal and national loss. We acknowledge the extreme sense of grief and loss experienced by family members. To you who are here and to those who are unable to be here, we offer deep and sincere sympathy. May you today find comfort and healing in the sustaining grace of our Lord. Michael grew up with a legacy of faith. He was schooled in a context of belief and adherence to the faith of Jesus Christ. Michael was exposed at home to the most sincere expressions of authentic faith manifest as discipline, love, loyalty, trust, hope, wisdom from above. We know that his life was shaped in good part by the precepts, the instructions, the commands, the laws of God and that helped to make him the consummate professional he was. He heard and knew that as the Bible teaches in the book of Ecclesiastes, to, for everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time of peace. What season is this one for you or me? What season is this one for Michael? when we would have finished thinking through all the what-ifs and the whys and the wherefores, the reality will still be with us that Michael is now gone from us to his eternal place. There is one who is still with us and he never left or abandoned us. He is there all the time, in every private moment, every public moment, every pain-free moment, every pain-filled moment. He is Jesus Christ, the one whose death brings life. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we are here in this sanctum of sorrow, confessing our utter dependence on you. We know you love us. We know that you turn even the shadow of death into the light of mourning. You reshape the greatest of tragedies into sublimest of triumphs. Help us now as we wait before you with reverent and submissive hearts, awaiting the great awaking in Jesus' name. Amen. So now we commit the body of Michael, our departed brother and friend, to its kindred earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. His spirit we leave to God, for we know the merciful judge of all the earth is a righteous God, and he always does right. Let us who remain dedicate ourselves anew to live in the fear and love of God so that we may obtain an abundant entrance into the heavenly kingdom. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, 
that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Senior journalist and broadcaster Michael Sharp has died. Mr. Sharp was the news operations manager at Jamaica News Network, a member of the RJR Gleaner Communications Group. This evening, we are in mourning as our colleague and friend Michael Sharp has died. He'd been hospitalized at the University Hospital of the West Indies since March 14, but took his last breath early this morning. In primetime news this evening, we take a look back at his life. Earl Moxham begins our coverage. Michael Sharp's early days in journalism included brief stints at the Gleaner, the Jamaica Information Service, and the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, JBC. Then he joined the staff of Radio Jamaica in March 1984. This came shortly after he had covered the Grenada invasion for the JBC. He was recruited for RJR by the company's managing director, Lester Spaulding. He had reason to be at JBC, and he says, you know, Mr. Sharp would like you to come down to radio. And I thought of it. I went to a good friend um, and I said, you know, what do you think about that? And he said, yeah, man. He said, yeah, come on down. He distinguished himself covering Parliament for the next decade and in that capacity developed the five-minute review of each sitting of the House and Senate in the feature Inside Gordon House. 
Welcome to Inside Gordon House, focusing on the parliamentarians, their decisions and how these affect our lives. Michael Sharp made it to Port of Spain in 1990 to report on the attempted coup against the government of Prime Minister A. N. R. Robinson. The Prime Minister was released at 1.20 when he was escorted to a Red Cross vehicle by one of his ministers, who still remains in captivity, and by one of his captains. He served as deputy news editor for RJR in the 1990s and also hosted a nighttime talk show, Sharp Talk. That show served as an outreach vehicle for many disadvantaged persons who brought their needs and concerns to him. It led to various fundraising efforts to alleviate some of those needs and an initiative to send some kidney patients to Cuba for treatment. The airwaves belong to the people. And it strengthens them when you use it for them and not for yourself. After the acquisition of JBC TV, renamed TVJ, he served briefly as head of television news before the radio and the television newsrooms were merged. He co-anchored primetime news on TVJ with Doreen Samuels for more than a decade. At the time of his passing, he was news operations manager at Jamaica News Network, part of the RJR Gleaner Group. But he still had a presence on Radio Jamaica, being a relief host on the talk show Hotline and doing the morning traffic report once per week. Throughout his career, Michael Sharp credited the journalist Terry Smith for inspiring him to be the best he could be. Pleasant Sunday afternoon to you, Jamaican. Welcome to Perspective. If taxi operators have their way, commuters could be faced with fare increases. Of- On the night of February 28, 2004, TVJ aired its last newscast at South Odin Avenue. On February 29, the first newscast was beamed from the new TV studios at Lindhurst Road. There were hiccups, but no downtime. It's an investment that has been long in the making. I think it's worth it, and we're ready to go. What will we lose um, with Michael not being here anymore? Um, A lot of of different things. Um, A lot of young people have lost a mentor. A lot of people who have had challenges have lost someone to look out for them. A a lot of people in communities where Michael would would actually stop and and give a hand and and help someone along. A young person who is looking for a job who is um, a source of of, inspiration to their own community you know i was talking to someone who said that michael didn't just go to an accident scene or a crime scene and someone was killed and and that city forgets it he goes back to a funeral he looks for the family he's in touch with people that's real humanity that's going beyond just covering the stories Um, so yes a mentor a human being with a kind heart one who rises to every single challenge that you throw at him. Every program idea, he takes it, he builds on it, and he delivers on it. And we are going to miss that in not having Michael Sharp here to do that. Michael Sharp was an iconic figure in Jamaican media. He distinguished himself as a reporter, a news anchor, journalist, and a host. After 38 years in the field, Michael Sharp would have become a part of every Jamaican household through his reports on Parliament, his anchoring of the nightly news, and the many broadcast programs he hosted. You know, I'm I'm happy to share my own personal experience with Michael. In the early 2000s, we rented a, a studio to record a national broadcast. Michael happened to be there, and He was very helpful in guiding me through my first time using a teleprompter. He he made it look so easy. And you could tell that he was a master at his craft and was very willing to share his skill and guide generations of journalists and broadcasters who came after him. Michael will be greatly missed. Jamaica is grateful to have had his service, and we express our deep sympathies and condolences to his family and co-workers. May his soul rest in peace, and his life be an inspiration to others to aspire and to exceed. I join with all of Jamaica in expressing condolences to the family, friends, colleagues of Michael Sharp. Michael Sharp was a wonderful broadcaster, a veteran of the business, always a pleasure to be around, friendly, 
calm, cool, easy going, and the kind of person who I think embodied the best traditions of the journalistic profession. Whatever his personal views happened to be on a matter, it wasn't obvious. He just wanted to hear as a journalist from you as the person he wanted to interact with. So we have lost a great son of the soil, a great journalist, and I know somebody who was well loved by the Jamaican public. To his family and friends and colleagues, our hearts and sympathies go out to you. God bless and may Michael Sharp rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon him. Just look at us now, now, now. What's the number one killer in Jamaica right now? Disease? No. Natural disaster? No. Bad mind? Mm, no. Crime? People, the place too pretty to destroy it with a man-made disease like crime. We need to stop and take responsibility for our country. Sometimes we may not be the ones committing the crime, but we know who is. Talk to someone. Don't let criminals destroy our lives. Don't let criminals destroy our country. A bit. Keep your TV on. On behalf of Major General Anthony Anderson, Commissioner of Police, the other members of the Police High Command, and all the members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, just want to say condolences to the family of Mr. Michael Sharp. So, Michael Sharp has been a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force since March 20, 1997, when he enlisted as a member of the United District Constable Association and he served as a district constable upon the time of his passing. His first appointment was at the Halfway Tree Police Station, where he served in a number of capacity. For those of us who knew Michael, he liked to be on the front line. He was an operations person. At one point, he was a part of the Crime Management Unit, the Special Anti-Crime Task Force, and many other um, entities within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. He was very integral to the creation of the communication, the constabular communication unit then, where he gave of his time and effort to ensure that he worked along with um, Mr. James Forbes and the team to create, to transform the communication department from the PIC to the CCN. And that was a major achievement then and we continue to build. He also served at the Community Safety and Security Branch. We were engaged in a number of activities with us, um, whether we were looking at the Neighborhood Watch Program, the Youth Program, or any other programs within the JCF. He was integral. He was very keen on ensuring the development of others, and I think that's one of the things that he will be known for and will be remembered for, where he gave up his time to ensure that he would always say, whoever he works with, you need to be the best version of yourself. So for us, he was always working, whether it's about communication or it was about a production, anything to do with the JCF, he ensured that we gave the best version of what we could give. So once again, on behalf of our Commission of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson, and all the members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, we just want to thank Michael for the work that he did for the Jamaica Constabulary Force on behalf of the Jamaican people, you will always be loved and remembered as our Mikey Sharp.
Patrick Anderson has sports. Um, thank you very much, uh, Michael. <laughs> now, All Ireland football supremacy settled today at Constant Spring. The Jockeys Championship continues to heat up at Caymanus Park, and Jamaica's Honor 16 at Ballers in action again. The details on that and the Olivia Shield a little later on. <laughs> This is indeed uh, a tough one, uh, another sad loss for journalism, another sad loss for the RGR Gleaner Communication Group. You know, Michael came to JBC a little bit after me back in 1983, 38 years ago, and he immediately made his mark by covering the Grenada invasion and uh, that provided the stamp of instant credibility for him, which he never lost. I also remember Michael from his brilliant parliamentary reporting on the program inside Gordon House. And every time I would see Michael before I left in 2018 for Florida, his discussion would be, how can we improve our coverage of news? How can we develop the staff? And his favorite topic was, what is the best equipment to use? He's always chasing better equipment uh, to be on the cutting edge. And so this news comes today, um, a gut punch, because Michael Sharp was passionate about news and nobody can ever take that from him or doubt his passion about news. Plus, he was a cool dude. Michael was really good at giving people opportunities and I was one of the people that Michael gave a chance because he gave me my first job in television and in journalism when I was almost fresh out of Carmack at the old broadcast studios in Halfway Tree and he was really formative um, in my career because he taught me a lot of the fundamentals. He went with me to Parliament and taught me about parliamentary procedure, all of the speaker, how to cover it. Um, he taught me how to cover a crime scene because Michael was really a role reporter. He was always on the lookout for news. Um, he always had a police scanner on, on his hips and uh, a camera and a microphone at the ready. Um, but as an editor, he was always looking for opportunities and he was the first one who put me on air. He put me on news at 10 and he taught me how to use a prompter, how to manage live situations, how to do a live interview. Um, he was a real encourager of people and I think that's his real strength and a lot of people will remember him for having given them a start in their careers because he was quite a good mentor and quite good at finding opportunities for you to excel and believing in you before you believed in yourself and I think the fraternity has lost a giant I mean it's a cliche but in Michael's case it's true because there are very few people who will not have had a Michael Sharp story um, and I think I think a lot of people will be gutted tonight, including myself. Michael played a significant role in my early development as a journalist. From the day we met in 1992, he inspired me to be the best that I could be in this field. And he didn't just talk the talk, he walked me through that process of development. So for example, very early in my time with Radio Jamaica, he gave me the opportunity to co-host Exposure with him and by the following year I was hosting it on my own. When he decided to move on from being the chief parliamentary reporter, I succeeded him covering that beat and it was a huge responsibility. It contributed immensely to my growth and so I can say that for those and other reasons, the journalist I am today, to the extent that I have made a success of it, Michael Shah played a significant role in that journey of progression and success. I'll always remember him therefore for his mentorship and his friendship. I am a senior producer at CBC News where I'm in charge of curating and helping to create black content for Canadian audiences. Michael Sharp hired me as a fresh, very green reporter straight out of Carmack with zero experience. I remember in the evenings, Michael Sharp used to help me to choose the proper sound bites for my reports. He also gave me on the job training in terms of voice lessons. I can still hear his voice to this day. He would say, Tamika, try not to sound too nasal. You know, remember to breathe and always, always be conversational. 
years later when I made the decision to migrate to Canada. Shortly after, Michael Sharp came to Toronto with his Your Issues Alive team. They were having a show here in Toronto for the Jamaican diaspora. And he said, Tamiko, I want you to pass through, you know, pass through. So I said, of course, of course I'm gonna come and of course I'm gonna show up just for support. And of course I was really happy to see my former boss. So I showed up at this building. It was jam-packed, filled with people with Jamaican heritage and people from the Caribbean diaspora. And Michael Sharp, the minute I stepped through the building, Michael Sharp is telling everyone, here is our reporter from back home, our very own Tamika Forrester, and she's a big time producer at CBC News. I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. I was just beyond myself. I was like, shh, Michael Sharp, I literally just got my foot through the door. And of course, back then I was just working in the building on a temporary basis, but Michael Sharp would not be quieted. He, I believe, took genuine pleasure and delight in digging up people. He had a serious interest in developing and pushing young talent, pushing them to the fore. And that's how I chose to remember him because it didn't matter to him whether you had little experience or no experience at all. What mattered to Michael Sharp was your attitude. And he would always say, come with your attitude to do your very best. And when you had a bad day and you made mistakes, he would always say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't overstress yourself. Just do not repeat the mistake and ensure that you do better next time. And so that's how I choose to remember the man that was Michael Sharp. Michael Sharp was an absolute master. The guy was a legend and a master of his craft in so many ways, but a master because we were all his pupils at, at, at some point, and I was happy that I had the privilege to learn at his feet. And he made it so easy to be a student as well. Not because he was so, only because he was so genuine with his time, but he was also very generous and genuine most importantly because he never felt threatened by the, the arrival of this new crop of journalists. You know, even in a sports team, you have the older players feeling threatened by the arrival of new talents, not Michael Sharp, because he almost felt as if it was his duty to really usher in the next generation of journalists. And I think the country owes him a debt of gratitude for uh, the crop that we now have informing and educating the public because of what he did, of how well he trained and, 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 and prepared the rest of us who came along. Um, he exited the stage and, and created that safe space for you to be yourself, understanding that you're not your last mistake, but you can always recover from that. And I think Michael Sharp, even uh, outside of the newsroom, when you run into him, you couldn't help but have a laugh. And if you were seated, when he walked into the room, he would, he would you know, urge you to remain seated. Of course, I, I, know, I'm, I know I'm a big thing, but you know, remain seated. And, and it, it never gets old. And um, you know, in, in, in the words of Elton John, uh, his candles will burn out long before his legend ever will. Uh, the guy was, 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 was a gift to the media and a gift to all of us. And by extension, I think a gift to the country. And we all are saddened by this, you know, tragic thing called death. Uh, but he left his mark and um, he left a mark on the media landscape that even many of us, if we were to outlive his time here on earth, uh, will struggle to replicate. And, and, and I think that that speaks volume for, for what Michael Sharp meant for the media and what he did for all of us as a younger generation. So uh, we mourn his passing, but we also celebrate what he gave us. Michael Sharp was a larger than life personality who enjoyed being in the limelight. He never shied away from hard work and he spent decades honing his craft. He embodied the qualities essential for an investigative journalist. He was courageous and relentless in unearthing the truth determined to follow story trails where others might have hesitated. He was fiercely competitive and confrontational when he needed to be. 
We worked together in various capacities over 24 years and he helped me to become the strong, resolute professional that I am today. His mantra, kill them with excellence. Um, yet under the veneer of his tough professionalism lurked a sense of humor. He had a jocular disposition and a ready smile. He was responsible for creating a number of news products and also exposing a number of stories of national significance for both the television Jamaica TVJ and the Jamaica News Network JNN. He never lost sight of succession and in his latter years he spent time educating, training and empowering young journalists with a reminder that they must maintain rigorous journalism standards. We here at the Public Broadcasting Corporation of Jamaica, PBCJ, worked closely with Michael on a number of projects. The most recent was over the Christmas holidays. We found him to be resourceful. We found him to be solution-oriented. His untimely death was a blow, and he will be sorely missed. In the wake of his passing, we find solace in his legacy. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can
I met Michael Sharp when he joined the Radio Jamaica newsroom and worked with him until 1999 when I left. Michael was a reporter, he was a producer, he was a presenter, and he was also the host and originator of the overnight talk show, Sharp Talk, which became a bit of a social phenomenon during its time. I remember Michael as a man of indomitable spirit when it came onto the business of finding the facts and reporting the news with all the integrity at his fingertips. He was a man who believed in himself and he believed in journalism. Over the years, I have interacted with Michael on time to, from time to time, but the last conversation I had with him was on the campus of the Northern Caribbean University where Michael was a lecturer. And we discussed the whole state of journalism in Jamaica today. And he was very dedicated to making sure that the younger people entering the profession were given all the tools that they needed to do the job to the best they can. He will be surely missed by the Jamaican media fraternity and I'm sure he's going to be missed by his family and the Jamaican nation at large. Rest in peace my brother Michael Sharp. I met Michael in 1993 when I joined the RJR group. At the time he was one of two lieutenants of Jennifer Grant, who was the radio news editor at the time. The other one was Gary Allen. Michael guided my coverage of Parliament and he also guided other areas of production and reporting. I remember, for example, once he and I were heading down together to the Denby showground and he just sort of said, OK, so what approach are you going to take? And he heard me out and then said, okay, over to you. And that was his style. He was really a throw you into the deep end kind of person, which left you to have to learn the craft and just figure it out. But Michael wasn't just about reporting, as we all know. We've all heard stories of him, but I have one lasting memory, and that is of him. And it's funny, I can't remember all the details of the story, but I do know a small boy was left vulnerable and I don't even remember why he was left vulnerable. But what I do remember is that Michael, a doctor friend of his, and I think there was another male and I don't remember who it was. But I remember they got together and decided to godfather this child out of danger. And so they saw to the child's health and the child's wholeness beyond the story and I think the fact that I don't even remember the details of the story is a testament to how Michael was able to move beyond the story and create a cause and so that's one of the lasting memories I have of Michael. In the later, later on Michael and I our roles switched and that had its interesting moments but one thing I will say about Michael is that he was a man of and for his team he loved his team and was committed to his team, and his team loved and was committed to him. He made out of them a kind of crew of night riders, and so they, will, they would go out at night and they would be sure to come back the next day with stories for 
television of the kinds of things that happened only at night. I remember that about him. Michael, we all know, was also very versatile. And part of his versatility was found in his jazz show on a Sunday night. And I remember when I was leaving to go and study, he invited me to his show because he knew I enjoyed jazz. And he had me selecting jazz pieces and standards that I enjoyed. So I remember that about Michael. Michael was a versatile soul. Michael was an interesting soul. Michael Sharp will be terribly missed. He has left a huge void. He was, I would say that he represented those elements that embody the ideal journalist. The journalist who is nimble, the journalist who has a big personality, the journalist who always has excellence as their end game. Not doing this just to collect a paycheck, not doing this just to say, oh, you know, I'm the guy on TV or I'm the guy on radio. He was so much more than that. He put so much into his craft and he got so much out of it. An excellent craftsman, Michael Sharp was. The PAJ uh, honors his contribution to the vocation. And, you know, I believe that his legacy will endure, that years from now, people, the generations that come after us will be talking about Michael Sharp and the contribution he made to journalism in Jamaica. I remember watching Michael and the rain on the evening news and taking special note of how professional the both of them were. The synergy that existed between the two of them was just excellent. And then I remember the first time I met Michael, it was on location for the Your Issues Live show. And taking note again of how meticulous he was, ensuring that everything was in order and in place to, to, to see that there was a successful show. And then a few years later, Michael and I became colleagues when he joined the faculty at Northern Caribbean University in the Department of Communication Studies. Most of our conversations centered around the well-being of the students because Michael wanted to ensure that the students were receiving the quality education that they deserved. He opened many doors for those students, ensuring that they got the practical hands-on training, using his contacts across Jamaica to ensure that they were placed in various areas to garner the experience that they needed. Michael will be remembered for the energy he brought to this department. I remember in the 2016 elections in particular, when he got a whole team of students, quite a number of them, to do real-time journalism coverage from different parts of the country during the election. This was big. And the students were so excited, they were so inspired. They wanted tips on what to do. I mean, what if something went wrong? How do reporters treat it? How do they deal with it? So he really, really inspired them. And I think that is one of the things that he will be most remembered for. His ability to lift people, not just to encourage them to do well, but to do exceptionally well. There was a lighter side to Michael also. He was always jovial, always sharing a joke, always happy, always, you know, ensuring that the people around him were happy and in good spirits. He will not be forgotten, even though he left us so soon. So take hope in knowing that, the, that Michael will continue to live on in our memories. Rest assured that God took him home at a time that he saw fit. Rest in peace, Michael. And for the rest of us who are here grieving, let us be encouraged. Let us do what we need to do to carry on and to ensure that Michael's legacy will be spread across this country and across the world. I know that Michael's legacy is going to live on because there are many of those students that he, the lives he touched and the, the, the training that he gave, and many of those individuals are working in the industries across the Caribbean, and I dare say across the world. So rest assured that Michael's legacy is going to live on. So take hope, be encouraged, and know that Michael will not be forgotten. So condolences to his family, to his loved ones, to his friends, and all of us should take comfort in knowing 
that Michael is at rest. God bless. He will be greatly missed. You know, every time I do the intro to Primetime News, I try to channel my inner Michael Sharp. He did something like this. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Michael Sharp. <laughs> he had such great energy on TV and I recall the times that I had to co-anchor with him. I tried to match up to that energy and he would encourage it. And let me tell you, I was usually exhausted after. But today, I'm a better news anchor having sat in the co-anchor chair next to him and Doreen Samuels. Two lessons I've taken from the experience. One, it doesn't matter the chaos happening around you or how you feel when the red light comes on and the director says, cue, you have to bring it. And secondly, always strive to lift others up. Thank you for the lessons, Michael. Love and respect always, Janella. Michael Sharp, a friend, motivator, a mentor, a broadcast a journalist, veteran in whatever he was doing, a man who was a stickler for time, one who told us that pre-production is 90% of everything that we do. Time management was essential. He taught us about Murphy's Law, whatever can go wrong will go wrong but this is something that went wrong that we never could imagine and life itself could not prepare us for this michael was a father figure to me from university days until working with him at the rgr cleaner communications group specifically at jamaica news network jnn he taught me so much and he gave me such a push to be where I am today. And if it wasn't for this man, I would not be where I am today. So Michael, I thank you for all that you have done and what you have instilled in so many persons that they will continue to build on that legacy that you have left and instilled in us. I thank you. Please remain seated. It's only me. That's one of the most famous lines from Michael Sharp when he enters the TVJ newsroom. And as a former editor here, and me now as the editor, I would always call on Michael for advice on things I want to do in the newsroom. And we, he would always be available at any time, sometimes even late at night. And as we reflect on his life, I just want to say, as uh, all my colleagues, enough love and respect for the guidance you have provided over the years. Thanks. My condolences to a great general. We lost a great figure in um, our journalism career, the Honorable Michael Sharp. I love the fact that he brought a lot of students in who are great generals now. And a whole lot more day when he did that train, I got come up. So his legacy is rich. Love and respect. What good my general. As I reflect on um, Michael Sharp's life, I will think of him and his legacy, what he has done um, for this business, what he has done in trying to, you know, foster talent within the industry with young people, his quest for excellence as you would say, kill them with excellence. And Michael was a man who worked very hard, but he played um, hard as well. And so I will remember him for that side of him that I would see um, at fame events that I planned, uh, where he would show that, you know, he was dedicated to, to news and he was dedicated to journalism, but he also knew how not to take life too seriously. Just a really good man and a really good person, and we will miss him, and we pray that his spirit will rest um, in peace. I mean, it's really hard to put words together to define a man that has been so much and has done so much for not only the industry in general, but for the persons who were blessed to be in his presence on a daily basis, or even just a little bit. I echo the same sentiments of so many persons that he was encouraging 
From the very first day I walked through the doors of what was RGR at the time, he has been nothing but encouraging. Entering an industry, news, where I was, you know, just it was just unfamiliar to me and looking at this person who's been doing it for so long, wondering, can I do this, am I enough? He was nothing but encouraging. He made me feel like I belonged here and like what I was doing was actually the right thing. Giving me little tips about my presentation, whether on air, radio or television, helping me to work through, you know, little differences at work, showing me that, hey, I know you're young and everything, but come, let me show you how this goes as an elder. Just stopping me to say, hey, I listen to your program, not to, you know, scold me about anything it is that I have done wrong, but to show me how to do it right, how to better myself, how to cement my place. You know, those things meant a lot and they still mean a lot. I know I speak on behalf of so many persons when I say he will be missed dearly. If it's just for the simple things like, hey, don't stand, it's just me. <laughs> or on a Tuesday morning to say that's how it is for more eyes on the streets. Whatever it is, he has done what he has always said and that is kill them with excellence. Mr. Sharp, you did it, Sharpie. Your purpose has been fulfilled. You came, you saw, you conquered. You did kill us with excellence. We appreciate you. We will never forget you and what it is that you did for us. You always used to say you, you always want me on your team because and you encouraged me a lot, honestly, and as I say, you're always the sharpest one, and you'll continue to be the sharpest one. Good evening, and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Michael Shaw. And I'm Oliver Watts. Stay with us, the details, after the break. Welcome back to Yoisha's Live, part two, Toronto. I, I, I was gonna stop doing that. Toronto, Canada. We're coming from the Jamaican Canadian Association headquarters, 995 Arrow Road. And we thank you, madame, for putting us up. But now well, let's try that, gentlemen. You're on. No, I have two issues. Well, when you go across this pedestrian cross, you go right into a rubbish pan. A big, man, I don't mean a pan, you know. I don't mean yes, up I hear you, Michael. Uh, concrete structure. Concrete structure, I know. Yes. Welcome back to your Issues Live. Tonight we come to you live from Mandela Park and we're talking about garbage. I conceptualized uh, your Issues Live and invited Michael to host. Michael embraced the opportunity and ran with it. He loved everything about uh, being a part of your Issues Live. Michael loved being in the communities, um, engaging with community members. We took the program to all kinds of communities. We went to remote uh, mountain communities. We took the program to dense urban communities. 
We went to, to communities in which community members were hurting from trauma. For example, immediately following the Dudus events, we went live into the Tivoli community where we interviewed community members who invited us into their homes to show us um, some of the, what had occurred, um, uh, bullet holes in their walls. We spoke with traumatized children. Actually, I recall an old woman um, embracing Michael and thanking him for coming because she, it was so important for her to tell her story, to tell her side of it. Uh, she had lost um, a family member and uh, she wanted her side of the story to be told, which we facilitated. We used the program to bring together and empower ordinary community members face-to-face uh, -face with powerful people in authority. Michael Sharp understood the value of the program and the thrust and the goal of the program, and he delivered. He came to Portland sometime, I think, 09, 2009, and did a year issues live. And it was around by the Errol Flynn Marina. And I saw a TVJ personnel, didn't know the name at the time, later on found out that it's Napier, and he was going back and forth in his TVJ shirt out of the broadcast units on the floor back and forth and I said to him how oh, can I be a part of all of this and he said hold on until when the show finish your talk and at the end of the show he brought me over to Michael Sharp and he said Michael this young man is interested in um being a videographer, you don't need one for Portland. Michael said, yes, indeed, we need one. And that was how I started doing news for TVJ. Michael is one of those, some people would say boss, I think if you call him boss, he wouldn't take on kind to it. But he's one of those persons who you cannot get in contact with and you feel like you're just a worker or whatever. I never ever get that feeling from him. Now, the year was 1999. Michael Sharp took on perhaps the most important assignment yet as head of news at TVJ. That, however, did not stop him from hitting the streets in search of news. And he had a team. They called themselves the Men in Black. they are the men in black not dressed in black suits like the movies but there was once a time they roamed the streets at night in search of the next big news story the leader of the pack Michael Sharp I think Michael is one of the greatest journalists I live to work with this is a man who take chance in life and a came a gunshot of fire down the road him said not here come here hit the road and trust me that's it so even t television is about seeing is believing, you know. And Michael always believing that seeing is believing, so you have to shoot it so the people can believe it. And Michael Sharp asked me, what, what is it that I want to do? And I said, I want to be one of the best camera operators coming out of Jamaica. And uh, I remember there were a lot of tough times when, because I wasn't employed to TVG at the time. And Michael Sharp saying that the only way that we can conquer them is by excellence. By always making sure that we put our best foot forward. Punctuality. There were a lot of things that he instilled in us as a group. Under his tutelage, the TVJ newsroom would become an institution for learning and development in media. He said to myself and Kirk Wright, I want you guys to be the presenters of News at 10. Well, he wanted to do some training and we decided to hide from Sharp as soon as the 7 o'clock news was finished. We decided to find a way to try to hide from him. And one night he was waiting at the gate and he says, Mr. Barnaby, you are given this opportunity. Don't turn it down. He brought me into the world of journalism because I studied civil engineering. And I remember when I got tired of that, 
I made a call to Michael Sharp. And I said to him, boy, I want to become a journalist, you know. And he said, what you can do? He said, have any experience? I said, no, I'm sorry, come and interview you. Went, did interview. And this part is profound. And Michael Sharp said to me, I'm only going to interview you because of your attitude. And I thought to myself, I only want one day a TVJ, you know. And that was from 2002. And here I am today. Of the group, his best friend, Kevin Savage, would be the last to have seen Michael Sharp alive. He recounted the moments leading to Sharp's hospitalization. He started to say, this is it, this is it. And I have to curse him and I lift him up because no COVID couldn't stop me from my friend. So I lift him up and I put him in the vehicle and I rushed him. And never knew that would have been the last drive out of me with my friend. Michael's next assignment was to head GNN. As news of his death sunk in, it was almost impossible for the staff to concentrate. In his office, his belongings still remain. For many of us, it is hard to imagine that he won't be coming back. Welcome to a special edition of Insight. We have the opportunity today to speak with a gentleman who has written a book. It took him all of 12 years, he tells us, <laughs> but here we have it. He is PJ Patterson. Name of the book, My Political Journey. He happens to be Jamaica's sixth prime minister and um, he went to a certain school that I'm well aware of, Calabar, and I would imagine it would mean that he has some gold medals because he still has some records when it comes politically. But let's find out 
what's the content of this book? What's about? And get an insight, if you may, into who this man is. One of the things I found out is that his political life, listen for this bombshell, started an initiation at about eight years old. <laughs> eight years old. You were ready to go, Mr. Patterson. Tell us about that. What caused that? What was that about? From the very first minute that he entered the RGR newsroom, it was easy to recognize that Michael Sharp was no ordinary journalist. He set out to be the first to get the story, but even more importantly, to get it right. His approach to interviews was allowing the person to say what he or she had to say. In other words, to express an opinion freely and of their own. He, as a news person, he would put together a package that would attract public attention. Among the areas he covered was Parliament, and he managed to bring it to life on the screen. He was very perceptive when it came to the conduct of government and also what was happening in the international arena. Being interviewed with him reminds me of a batsman facing a bowler. He would tempt you with some easy balls dead on the stumps. You had to play everyone. But what I would call an impish smile on his face indicated that he was going to come with a vicious bouncer and you'd better be prepared to answer it. I would describe him as a journalist of great perspicacity, always seeking to get the story behind the story. I think the field of journalism is the poorer for his passing, and we will all miss his style. He was a man of eclectic tastes in food, in sports, in music. All of that made him a very rounded man. We shall miss him greatly and may his soul rest in peace and may he enjoy perpetual rest. I am in the Calabar High School Museum where Mr. Michael Sharp is recognized for his contribution to Jamaica. The Calabar Old Boys Association registers its heartfelt sympathy to the family, friends, and colleagues of our esteemed alumnus, Michael Sharp, on his passing on Tuesday, April 20th, 2021. The professional journey of this veteran broadcaster and elder statesman of journalism is an eloquent testimony to the fact that his life inspired others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. His glittering career, which spanned many years with the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, the Jamaica Information Service, and the RGR Gleaner Group, and the accompanying respect which attended it, was made possible by the unalloyed dedication and passion which he brought to his craft. It manifested itself in its versatility in the different aspects of media, television news presenter, radio talk show host, parliamentary reporter, road traffic reporter, music program presenter, and creator of news content programs such as the iconic Inside Gordon House and Shark Talk. In addition to service in the media, 
he played an integral role in the shaping of the lives of aspiring journalists in his stint as an adjunct instructor at the Northern Caribbean University. Michael was also a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force where he served with distinction in various capacities. His life spoke poignantly to the time-honored school song of his beloved school, Calabar, sworn to be renowned and famous for the honor of the school, true as steel in his zeal for the honor of the school. There is no gain saying that his redoubtable career in the media, which spanned over 40 years, has brought unadulterated pride and joy to his alma mater. This media at the end has limited all earthly roads, and as we solemnly watch the recession of his mortal remains, we are comforted by the fact that the hue-filled tapestry woven by him over the 65 years that he occupied this sphere will outlive the current sorrow occasioned by his passing. Michael Sharp, always positive, always mentoring the youngsters, always sharp, always striving for the utmost for the highest. Lord, in your mercy, Grant your beloved son Michael a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at last. The RGR Communications Group is moving to acquire an even greater share of the cable market with a proposed buyout of a reggae entertainment television, RETV, and Jamaica News Network, JNN. And uh, Deputy Managing Director of the group, Gary Allen, now joins us live. And the first question will be is, what is the strategy behind this move? I think of Michael and I think of so many different things going back over 20 odd years of working with Michael. So many different assignments, so many different places, um, you know, it's not just parliament, it's not just a crime scene, it's not just a political event that we are out covering. There are so many different things that uh, Michael has accompanied so many of us to cover and always encouraging us in the pursuit of whatever we are doing to, to be excellent in what we do. 
I, I remember Michael is always one for his, his jokes, always likes to laugh about things, but also finds fun in serious things. And I, I recall this Sunday afternoon when we went to um, Manchester to do um, an exposure program on our way back and we got to the roundabout at um, Glenmuir and there, it was raining. There was a, a lady who was um, standing there and she waved. Um, I was driving and I continued driving and Michael said, no, 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 stop, stop. You don't see the lady asking for a ride. So I said, yeah, but we're not supposed to um, take up anybody in the news vehicle. And he says, um, yeah, but what kind of countryman are you? You, you see rain falling and you went past the woman and you were in the rain. So of course we stopped and um, backed up and gave the lady a drive and you know you think back about it and you smile to yourself because that was in in that moment um, bending the rules to to accomplish something that is good and it's memories like those that are not huge things but that make a huge impact on you in terms of the way you think about things. On the humorous side I also remember Michael always asking me for one more from my father because I, I would say things from time to time about things that my father would say and he always said, well, what would your father say about that? And it started out with something we were doing one day and um, instead of saying that you're wasting time or you're wasting energy, I said to him, you know, my father would say that you're lighting $10 looking for 10 cents and he found that something that he latched on to and he always said, well, what will Father say about this now? So you know, there, there are so many different things to remember about Michael, so many human things, so many things that you would, would smile about. I believe that, that the memories that I have of Michael are really centered around what he did as a person, which he exemplified every single day in his work. Um, he believed in the people that he worked with, he always wanted to develop talent and he had an eye for talent and he was also patient enough to allow people to make their mistakes and, and allow them to grow. Um, he was a stickler for punctuality, he was a stickler for preparing, 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 preparing and in all of that he's an asset to the team here at Television Jamaica, his team at Jamaica News Network. And I would venture to say to the broadcast industry overall in Jamaica and um, represents a talent that is, is not replaceable. However, I know that the team, I actually last Friday had a meeting with the team from Jamaica News Network and we've made a promise, we've made a commitment. They're gonna to continue to kill them with excellence and what he means to the industry, what he means to them, is not just going to live on in them, but it is going to live on for generations to come. Michael, thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a person that I managed to meet, that I managed to interact with, that I managed to grow to love, and who has had an impact on my life and my, my, my management. Thank you, Michael. Rest in peace. Mr. Sharp was like a Swiss army knife in the media landscape, meaning that he had something to offer in all aspects of media. I have had the pleasure of knowing Mr. Sharp for almost a little over a decade because I know him before I started working here. A mentor, a friend, a boss, but more important, a leader.
as a producer. He was comfortable editorially, technically, and also as a manager, where he performed well above average in all these areas. He still found time to enjoy life. And over the years, I discovered that he was a lover of jazz music. He also loved reggae music, especially Bob Marley. As the song says, you traveled each and every highway and you lived a life that's full, giving young people like myself the opportunity to come and work at the RJ Aguilina Group and to learn from some of the best in the journalism field. You taught us that nothing is too small for us to work on and too big for us to give our time to. It is hard for us to move on, but I know that the team that you've left here at JNN will continue to make that legacy that you started something that will be remembered for a lifetime. Rest in eternal peace, Michael Sharp. I have never lost anybody um, at all close to me in all my life that I could say, you know, I'm hurt. And so generally when I usually extend condolences to people, I do it, you know, but I, and I sometimes I say, I, I think I know how you feel, but I don't believe I did based on how I feel now. You know, I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, Mr. Sharp's mom and some of his sis and his sisters. And I remember his older sister said to me once, she said, Jervis, the older you get, the more funerals you'll be going to. And I didn't take it as anything. And I didn't even know that it would have been, you know, Mr. Sharp would be one of those funerals that I'd be attending. And, um, oh, when I heard about his passing, is like, I still, checking my phone, my email to see him emailing me. I was still checking my phone for him to call me to help him to go through something in Photoshop or whatever. I still expect him to call me and I tell me, say, you know, why may I come in later or why may I leave early? I still expect to see him walk through the door. Um, even now, I cannot accept the reality that I will never see this man again. This man who have sat as, uh, at his feet and learned so much. This man, we've been all over the place. I have experienced so many things. He knows stuff about me that people who I've known all my life don't know. Um, this is a man I can't even lie to because if I come to him to try to lie to him, he see right, right through me. This man that I really love and respect, you know, has gone. But I am not going to be troubled because I know he's at a better place because he's a good man. And I know that one day, Mr. Sharp, you know, I will see you again and we will sit down together and we'll talk and laugh about all of this. Rest in peace, sweet prince. He was also a wordsmith. He would play on words and tell you about the origin of words and he also spoke Spanish. He was a sports fan. He would tell you that Calabar would win champs every year without even knowing the squad that they had. He was a Chelsea fan and we would discuss tactics and predictions in the games. And he also found time to be a farmer, a bee farmer. And he was always expanding his interests and I admired that. I also admired that he was family oriented and he spoke glowingly about the bonds that run through the Sharp family and I'd like to take this opportunity to express my sincere condolences to the immediate Sharp family at this time. Michael will be dearly missed, however his legacy will live on as he touched so many young lives over the years and he gave a lot of people the start that they are functioning from right now. I just want to say rest well sharp and we will remember Murphy's law and we will remember to plan 
and we will remember to be punctual and respect time and all of these things. Rest well, my friend. Thank you. I have known Mr. Sharp for a very long time, from schooling at Northern Caribbean University to eventually working with him at Jamaica News Network. It has been um, an outstanding and awesome transition. You know, it's almost like the best of both worlds. Um, when I think about Mr. Sharp, he, he's a jack of all trades. He knows how to do almost everything in media. You know, back in school days, he was uh, the one who taught us how to be, the importance of being phlegmatic, being um, a well-rounded media practitioner, and above all, just, you know, being punctual and always planning. R.I.P. Boss for life, Mr. Michael Sharp. Some right the one walk one all over the earth, people feeling hurt. Over the past year, the legends are leaving Earth. Veteran, journalist, broadcaster Michael Sharp passed away. Now the entire RGR family is feeling hurt. Condolences to his relative. Right now by screaming, surf. Some kneeling dirt, praying to God to bring you back. But will healing works? I'm feeling worse as I read his verse. A jovial man, a great man. Jamaican who believe in work, forever a leader, a legend in our arts, all when a six feet beneath in earth, tell them precisely, sad situation, R.I.P. It's really sad to talk about Mr. Sharp in the past tense. It's difficult to process that he's no longer here with us, you know, and he was just a person who always found a way. He always made it work with the limited or little resources and he truly epitomized where there's a will, there's a way. Mr. Sharp always got the job done. He always thought it could be done. And as he always said, kill them with excellence. That was his catchphrase. Mr. Sharp was an amazing human being. He was a father figure. He was a friend. He was a, like, a savior for many, a lot of people who I know who've come in contact with him wouldn't, they even said like, I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for Mr. Sharp. And it hurts to know that somebody so amazing, somebody who put so much faith in people who never even have that much faith in themselves. Somebody so treasured and loved is gone. Michael Sharp um, truly epitomizes what it means to be an inspiring leader. His, um, his voice was far reaching, his message was clear, and his impact immeasurable. Um, his larger than life personality will truly deeply be missed but his legacy lives on in the hearts of those he touched. And for that, we're grateful. We're grateful for the gifts he left us. I am addressing you as you. I don't want to address you in the third person because though you're gone physically, your spirit is with us and will always be with us. You entered my life at a point when I needed a new teacher to give me a sense of direction. You came in as a teacher and you turned into a boss or supervisor as you preferred to call yourself and you also turned into a friend. You were a mentor and I will never forget all your love, your support, your teachings, all the fun times that we had. Are we ready for this? Stand by. Stand by. Hey, watch out. Hello. My brother, Ramon, I'm making um, 
I'm the big and slow. Man. Come on, get everything. No rushing, man. Stand by. <laughs> How much minutes? How much second left, sir? I'm nervous for him. Why I wonder if he so can do it. <laughs> Master, what's there? Blessings and love, everybody. I've been asked to talk about the legacy of Michael Sharp. One thing Sharp taught me is you cannot get it perfect. You know, I was known as the guy who tried to dot every I and cross every T. He said, Edgar, you just have to let it go. You know, you just have to let it go. Um, many people don't talk about his fun side. You know, Mikey was the best singer. You know, he was the best singer. He did voices. You know, um, he taught me that Michael, manly voice. You know, the Michael. You know, he'd go like, that Michael Manley was a true troubadour. <laughs> you know, he did the voices. Um, he was just really a fun guy to be around. Um, I just, you know, you don't get it perfect, but you can get it right. And he tried his very best all the time um, to come near perfection by getting it right. And I'm not going to say he's perfect, but more often than not, he got it right. He was the go-to man, the one-man army. You know, he could write, he could voice. He knew production inside out. He knew everything about the transmitters. He, he just knew television. You know, he knew broadcasting in general. You know, he was the general of media. You know, I would call him the godfather. Many people don't understand why I went to CBM to work. Um, I saw him as a godfather. And, you know, this morning or whenever this is played, you know, I want to bless him up. Um, bless up Mikey Sharp, real Jenna, you know, men in black, forever. I have come in contact with Michael Sharp for over 40 years now. He has been a friend, a mentor, and a good advisor. We met at the, the GIS together myself, Trevor Johnson, and the late Ian Boy. And I just want to say, Michael has helped a lot of people, and he has shared lives with a lot of folks. And there's a song that I remember well. If I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or a song, if I can help somebody from doing wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Michael Sharp, living was not in vain because he has touched a lot of lives across Jamaica. I just want to say, Michael, sleep well. One day, hopefully we'll meet again. Mr. Sharp was a visionary leader, a charismatic leader, a multifaceted media man, someone who walked his walk and talked his talk. He ensured that whatever goals he was aiming at, was achieved. Michael Sharp was a lecturer to many, but he was never my lecturer. He was my teacher every single day I encountered him. Every day I learned something new, and that's something I'll always have with me. We shared birthdays in January, and I remember I jokingly asked him as my boss if I could get the day off and he said, adults go to work on their birthdays, so I will see you here on your birthday. And we laughed. 
He has impacted many, but he'll always hold a special place in my heart. Every day he taught us the value of living life to its fullest. Coming into the office and dancing and singing, it was a joy to be around him. And knowing the importance of working, to be excellent at everything you do, no matter how small of a resource you have, but to be excellent, to carry excellence everywhere you go. My work ethic today is because of him. And I'll forever be grateful. I'll always remember him as my mentor. And every lesson I've learned, every lesson I've learned in this business, in my career, is because of him. Wow, Michael Sharp, what a giant, you know. Michael, one of the greatest things about him was that he always saw the best version in anyone. You know, in a world where people will see you and think, you know, the worst of you, Michael saw the best in you. And he got you to believe in yourself in a way that you probably didn't even see for yourself. I never thought I would do TV in my life but Michael saw that I could do it. They say God knows best and he continues to master and to plot our lives for us. And today, while I sat and I thought about what to say about you, I really thought about the fact that I believe that God knows best because he knew best in placing you in my life. He's a born perfectionist who surprisingly didn't have to work hard to prove it. His natural attributes made it easy for him to coach others. At one point when I aired one of my broadcasts, he noticed some flaws in my work. When I told him I had to rush due to studio time, this is what he said to me. Ozzy, I ensured that there was time for you to do your work and to record. When you are recording for production, ensure that you give it your all. Let no one, I repeat, let no one or nothing prevent you from doing your best. Um. My name is Amon Dixon and my experience with Michael Sharp has been nothing but extraordinary. Um, he was literally the face and voice of my childhood. And when I started working here, when I met him during orientation, I was able to say it to him. And that's a moment I'll never forget. And I'm Demoy Whiteley, a JNN ambassador, and I would like to send my personal condolences to the family and friends of Mr. Michael Sharp. Mr. Michael Sharp had a real love for young people and the fresh talents. He was very professional in his work and he, was, he had a real love for media and the business of production. Every moment was a teachable moment for Mr. Sharp and I could always look forward to learning something new whenever I was in studio with him. My friend Marisol, say hi and one of my favorite persons in the world. Say hi, Mr. Sharp.
and I discovered that we were cousins at a party that I had thrown. Those parties were fun-filled affairs attended by people from all walks of life, including members of the media. In the family, everybody called him Tony, but I called him Michael. And in Jamaica, everybody calls me Babsy, but he called me Olivia. Michael and I shared a bond and mutual respect. We worked well together. After he returned from journalism studies in New York in the 80s, Michael worked with me at the office of the Prime Minister. Later, he went to work at the Jamaica Information Service and then the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, both of which fell under my supervision as parliamentary secretary at the time. I watched as Michael progressed through almost 40 years of journalism along with his various other accomplishments. Michael played a huge role in popularizing nighttime talk radio with the introduction of his legendary show. It is on the records that Sharp Talk reached out to many disadvantaged people who brought their needs and concerns to Michael and whom he helped through his fundraising efforts. Another of his shows was the standout Your Issues Live, which also gave Jamaicans at home and in the diaspora a platform to discuss social issues. I recall coverage of the 1983 Grenada intervention, as well as his exceptional reporting skills in covering the attempted overthrow of the government of Trinidad and Tobago in 1990. I remember very well that he won national recognition for his coverage of the one-party parliament in the 1980s and his very popular Inside Gordon House review of the happenings in the lower and upper houses of parliament which was aired on Radio Jamaica. As his voice became familiar to many inside and outside of Jamaica, so did his face as he became one of Jamaica's leading primetime television news presenters. For Michael Sharp, journalism was not merely a profession, but a passion. We will miss his passion, his diligence, his commitment, and special brand of journalism. His focus was always excellence. That was his word to members of his team. As we bid him farewell, let us recommit ourselves to excellence as Michael did in all his endeavors. Michael, rest well. Love you. Love you lots. Last night I lay a sleeping. There came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing and ever as they sang. Thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Stop your gates and sing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna to your King was changed, the streets no longer rang, hushed with glad hosannas, the little children sang, the sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill, 
as the shadow of a cross arose upon the lonely hill, as the shadow of a cross arose upon the lonely hill. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, hark how the angels sing a hosanna in the highest hosanna to your king. Once again, the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside a tideless sea. The light of God was on its streets, the gates were open the wide. And no one was denied No need of moon or stars by night Or sun to shine by day It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away it was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away Jerusalem Jerusalem sing for the night is all Hosanna In the highest Hosanna forevermore Hosanna In the My fondest memory of my brother is going to Hellshire to eat the fish and have and have festival also with a red stripe. It's been a little tough this time coming to Amer uh, coming to Jamaica. Sorry, my brother is always picking me up at the airport in front of the police station, so I know exactly where to stand. Uh, wasn't there this year. He um, would always make arrangements to go to a play and to go to Hellshire. That didn't happen this year. So it's been a little tough because every year I would see him. I just want to say I thank you guys for taking good care of him. You know him as a newsman. He was the news and the news was him. If you're with him, you know he's going to stop for a story if he sees something. He was that embedded and in telling the people whatever is going on on the streets. We will miss him very, very much. He is a major loss to the family, friends, and to Jamaica and the diaspora. One of the things I think that has influenced 
at least I can speak about my younger sister and I, is his ability to communicate with all, everyone, no matter your walk of life. He is so gifted. And boy, did he love to sing, and he had a really good voice. My father was a really good singer too. And he loved to sing and, you know, coming to Jamaica on vacation, he would pick us up at the airport. He would take his vacation to be with us, and he did everything for us. He was a great tourism ad because when we had friends coming in from Europe or the United States, he would plan trips, get a bus to go to a Little Ochi, get a bus to take us to Dunge River just year after year. So he was a great tourism ambassador. I'm gonna miss my brother, you know, coming to Jamaica will be different without him. But I'm glad that you had him all these years and thank you for loving him back. Michael Anthony Sharp, known as Tony, was born on January the 9th, 1956 in Kingston, Jamaica. He was the fourth of seven children to his proud parents, Siebert and Dorothy Sharp. A personality from the beginning, he called himself The Hub and used this self-title to bring fun, mischief and laughter to the family. Michael grew up in Walton Gardens, attended Halfway Tree Primary School and was a proud graduate of his beloved Calabar High School. After completing high school, he joined his parents and siblings in the U.S., where he studied journalism at Hunter College in New York City. Once he graduated, Michael returned to the land he loved because in his words, Jamaica sweet. The island was not only where Michael lived and worked, it is the place that brought him the most joy. He loved yamming fish from his favorite ladies at Hellshire, delighting in having a drink or a few with his friends and taking drives to the country to visit his family. He loved watching sports of all kinds, but particularly cricket, track and field, and of course football, as a longtime reggae boys and Chelsea fan. And when the high school champs was on, especially if Calabar was competing, he was never without his old school tie. While his dedication was to journalism, Michael was a hard worker committed to helping others in many capacities. This included years of service as a Kingston Auxiliary Police Force and business and journalism lecturer at both the University of West Indies and Northern Caribbean University. Michael was a persistent student from honing photography skills as a youth in the basement dark room to completing his MBA in his 40s. Michael continuously sought to improve himself, to stay young and mentally agile. Even, even amid COVID-19 pandemic, he continued to develop hobbies like vegetable gardening and even beekeeping. Michael's jovial spirit and passion fueled him throughout his life and storied broadcast career. He was grateful for the opportunity to report the news to his countrymen in Jamaica and the diaspora for almost 40 years even when it meant only having time for a nap between reading the evening news and moderating late night shows, he welcomed each opportunity. His career highlight reel includes his fierce coverage of parliament affairs in the 1990s and news programs such as Inside Gordon House, Sharp Talk and Your Issues Live. There was even a brief jazz radio show that he did from his own record collection. Michael held firm to the essentials of journalism, an obligation to the truth and loyalty to citizens. At times that meant putting himself and his team in harm's way to shed light on crime and violence. But when he could, he used his position to assist others. Such was an occasion when he used his radio show to help raise funds for a citizen to get a medical procedure in Cuba that was not available locally. Michael wanted to ensure that the people were heard and many of his broadcast moments focused on lending the mic to Jamaicans to share stories and voice their concerns in their own words. Until his illness, he was managing and directing RJR's internet broadcasting. His extensive career provided Michael with the opportunity to mentor others, and he would push friends and family to aim higher and to reach farther. He took great joy in seeing them attain and even exceed their goals. Michael strived to live by the words of one of his favorite songs, 
If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I could cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I could help, if I could show somebody he is traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Michael died on April 20th, 2021. He is survived by his children Mishka, Michael Jr., Karsten, Madison, Mackenzie, Azaria, and Ethan. His siblings Judith, Jennifer, Carl, Marva, Carol, and Arlene. Aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews, and numerous cousins. Our family would like to thank Jessica, who was by his side during his illness. We would be remiss if we did not acknowledge and thank friends, the media fraternity, associates, students, and devoted listening audience for their well wishes and their prayers. Our family would like to thank you for your skill, professionalism, and care while attending to our uncle. We greatly appreciate you and the frontline healthcare workers around the country who are timelessly performing duties, oftentimes at personal risk, and always to help keep Jamaica safe. Thank you again. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway and more, much more than this. I did it my way. In a world, are a soul.